Left kick, left kick, right hand, left kick. Low, high, there you go, good. And then kick his leg when he tries, yeah, woo! Whenever we post sparring footage, everyone's like, y'all spar so light, y'all spar, like, this isn't even sparring, this is just like patty cake. But there's a reason that we spar light and that's to preserve our health and our brain cells. Today is about volume and composure. Go! There you go, there you go. There you go, there. So the key to keeping people light and friendly, it sounds crazy, but is to actually have them attack someone that's not fighting back. Because if, if your partner is not gonna counterattack you, you don't have to worry as much. So you have no pressure to go with a lot of intensity. And uh, this is a good warm up. Like this gets you really, really tired. One person attacking for 30 seconds, the other person defending for 30 seconds. Switch immediately, go! We start with this because everyone gets a, a sense of like what each person can take. Everyone kind of goes with everybody. Everybody trains together, right, in this class. This is um, all ages. This is our advanced class, but it's all ages. We got combo for combo. One, two, three, maybe four punches and a kick. Finish every combo with a kick. Boom, 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 bang. He's gonna defend how he would normally defend. Right, don't, you don't have to tank these. You're not a punching bag, you're practicing defense. I won't feel like I have to try so hard. Some of you guys that maybe have trouble, I'll give you an example. The lead hook to the body from close stance, like just hitting that thing, that's really tough early on. Like, how do I get over there? I don't have to worry about him doing anything back to me. Like, he's not gonna crack me with his rear hand as I'm doing this thing. I can just throw it. Push your partner to like exactly what they're comfortable with and then a little bit more. Good, Gore, yep. Answer right back, Gore, answer right back. Good, kick the outside of that lead leg next time. <laughs> Everything you did was good, just kick the outside of that lead leg. Don't check early, don't check early. Jab, jab, to the body, outside kick. There you go, go around, go around, no, the other way, go around the other way. Yeah, to your left. This gives me a chance to like make corrections where the guy's not under a ton of pressure. He's not under a ton of pressure. He does it because he knows it's only going to be but so many things. Good. That was awesome, Gore. It's only going to be so many things, so he doesn't have to... <laughs> that was good. That was good. Everybody in here is younger than me, stronger than me, and faster than me. Everybody. But I have a responsibility as their coach to help them get better. So that means I have to stay reasonably in shape, even though I'm the coach. One way I do that, I try to mind my nutrition. It's hard when you own a business, so I've been drinking this AG1 Athletic Greens. They're the sponsor of today's video. So I'll explain what that is real quick and then come back and I'll show you the live sparring rounds. Dude, it was like way too crazy and hectic in there, which is kind of the reason that I like the AG1 by Athletic Greens. It's a nutritional drink. I know I'm supposed to be eating all the raw superfoods and all that stuff. I'm just lazy and I have bad habits and this is a good daily micro habit. It's really easy to do. One scoop, one minute, once a day, every day. I like to do it on an empty stomach before breakfast or even if I'm not eating breakfast. When I drink this, I feel like a lot more energy. It's got nutrients that help sustain healthy energy levels. Vitamin K2, B12, riboflavin, manganese, like all kind of beetroot powder. Whether you're vegan or paleo or keto or whatever, it, it jives with all of that. I mean, it's tons of stuff that you'd never be able in a, in a busy lifestyle. Like I have the studio, the YouTube channel, a bunch of kids, like I have a bunch of stuff. I would never get all that nutrition in just if I was trying to eat it all. It kind of doesn't taste like anything. I mean, you can tell that there's stuff in there, but it tastes like if nutrition was a flavor, that's what I would call it. I am constantly trying to keep up with people who have me outmatched physically. It's part of my job as a coach and as a parent. It's got minerals that combat muscle cramps like magnesium, vitamin C and E, ashwagandha. <laughs> That was good. That was good. I love saying ashwagandha. This is also NSF certified for sport. So it's designed for professional athletes and all the ingredients in it have been verified through an exhaustive process. If you wanna know all the ingredients and all the benefits of it, click that link down below. When you make your first purchase, 
You also get their liquid dietary supplement. You get a year's supply for free. It's got vitamin D3 and K2. K2. You get a year's supply for free and some travel packets, which I keep at the studio in case I get stuck up there. And now, let me go back to, you know, beating up on some of my students. All right, so this is Tyler, kind of uh, one of our more intermediate students, and he makes a mistake early on and lets me get right in his latch. And that's, I'm gonna be trying to get close to him and he's gonna be trying to keep me away. There's no reason for him to do that. And then he wisens up and he's gonna do a much better job keeping me at bay. He's a rangy southpaw, obviously has a lot of size on me and a lot of strength on me. He's also younger than me. He's also more better looking than me. He's basically better than me in almost every single way. Uh, but the cool thing about light sparring is that all people can train together. Whether we're short and weird looking or tall and handsome, either way. Uh, I'm trying to try some capoeira and he snap kicks me almost right in the face, pulling it back at the last minute. Maybe it would have got my shoulder, but that's kind of the great thing about this type of sparring is he can throw that. And he was a little worried. He felt like he did something wrong. I'm trying to ride out these kicks. I'm trying to, when he kicks my front leg, I'm trying a new way of defending it. Uh, I don't love it. It's not my favorite. Um, the, one of the benefits here, though, is that I get to test that sort of thing out because he's not kicking so hard. And I do have his timing. The other, that's the other downside of this light sparring amongst friends is you see I timed his kick out there because I just can, I've seen it so many times. And he's seen my kicks so many times. You see he defends those as well. So there's a downside to it. There's plenty of downsides, but I think the benefits far outweigh the downsides. As long as you have some context, as long as you have some good sparring and some good hard sparring done occasionally, or you've had some fights, but you don't need to swamp uh, brain cells in exchange for exercise every Saturday uh, just to maybe stroke your ego or just maybe to prove you're a real fighter. And also martial arts is an art form. It's supposed to be fun. There, I finally got him with the little knee on the shin right now. So that's, that's my grin when I know. I always grin like that when I know I got you. And uh, that's the end of that round. Now, this is me uh, sort of halfway sparring, halfway coaching one of the young men from our teens class. He's just begun sparring with us in this class. This class that we're in is an all-ages sort of thing. Sort of. There's, it's an adult class, but I make some exceptions. If I have some kids who want to compete or I have some teens that want to compete and they are mature and they are ready, we have them come in here and there's portions of this class that they're involved in and portions that they're not involved in. You know, we save the, the, the hard stuff for each other. Now this is Brandon. Brandon's got a good bit of experience. He's uh, had quite a few fights. He's been out the game for a little while and just made his way back to us. Now Brandon, I am trying to teach Brandon a lesson by kicking his body because he leaves his body open and I'm kicking and jabbing his body and that's my job is not only do I get to practice that stuff, which I should practice that stuff, but I'm reminding him, like I'm spending most of my time at the body. Don't worry, there was, that wasn't a cool on purpose thing. By the way, that's what it looks like when I throw a combo. Everyone always picks on me for throwing single shots, but I can throw combos. And Brandon can hit hard. He's got really good boxing and a pretty good straight jab and he's got good reads and good timing. But we don't have to, uh, I don't have to get brain damage to go with him. You know, we, we would probably have a hard time sparring multiple rounds together, him and I. If I catch his kick, I let it go because I only caught it because he was throwing it slowly. And uh, you know, we can kind of laugh and talk to each other during the round. I, I can try goofy stuff. I'm trying to make a shoulder roll into a left kick work there. I haven't made it work. I connected a good straight right, and he got a good uppercut there. We both landed, uh, you know, hard, what would be hard right hands from if we threw them for real. And that's sort of the benefit. You get to practice real stuff, and you might think that, oh, I get to practice that in hard sparring all the time. Not as many times. And if you do, a lot, do it a lot against multiple people, you only get to practice it the one time on each person. And if you do have a ton of people, you'll quickly run out of them. You might think that you're, what you're doing is fine. You might think that what you're doing is okay. But there's a, a good chance that people are very unhappy and very you know, disgruntled with the way you're treating them, you know, the way you're uh, handling them and just not saying anything about it because it's hard to get two grown men to let their ego go and say, hey buddy, you're hitting me too hard. It's just not gonna happen. Now this is Chris, and yes, 
It is a ridiculous proposition for the two of us to spar together. I see that. Now, Chris and I, it's gonna be a battle of, look, Maddox is getting the feet because he knows that this is gonna be a footwork battle. Chris is a rangy, tall guy who's also fast, so I have to get close. And that's about as close as you can get on the footwork. Uh, but he's, he's like not gonna let me do that again. And he could kick me from across the room at any time. Oh my God, that hurts. That did not feel good. And he didn't do it hard, but it was just well-timed and I wasn't expecting to get kicked there. He, he probably could have got me there. Sometimes when I know someone could have got me, I'll just kind of walk away and I won't rush back in and counter. And this is a good example. He read that I, my head was gonna be there and I knew it, he was gonna read it and I put a block there in place. And these are the sort of games we can play because Chris and I are both martial artists. We like doing this just for the sake of learning and just challenging ourselves and just playing and expressing ourselves through martial art, which uh, would be hard to do if I was trying to rail him with an overhand right or he was snap kicking me from across the room and taking my head off. Uh, what's, what's funny here is I get into the clinch and I kind of think that's what I want and everything's going well and that is kind of what I want, some knees and dirty boxing. Um, you're not supposed to block knees like that. That's kind of one of the, that's one of the downsides of light sparring. If this were real sparring, uh, and now Chris, yeah, he knows he knows my tricks. He knows that trick. Uh, that one works pretty good. If people don't know what to do, they'll just sort of freeze up. But the, one of the downsides is I, I get in habits like blocking knees with my arms. You're not supposed to do that because you can they can blast through your arm very easily. But in light sparring, you know you get away with stuff like that. Like, yeah. Well, you initiate it first. Sometimes with Chris and me, Chris will initiate a clinch. Yeah. It's the fighting equivalent of if you know somebody's going to make fun of you for something, you say it about yourself first. Yeah. You know, like I know I'm short and bald. My eyes are too close together. <laughs> Natalia, you got one more? Let's go. Now, this is the star of the show today. This is Natalia, and this is a treat. You guys are in for a treat to watch her. She's very, very new. Like... I don't know, six months, and look at that. Look at this. And look, she can she can take some good, look at that. That's annoying to me, watching this back now. <laughs> she lighting me up. Uh, but you know, that's the cool part about light sparring is the ego comes out of it. Look, she takes a hit and keeps on coming. And yes, right there, I probably could have interrupted her and started answering back, but part of my job is also to instill confidence in her. She has a PKB match coming up and I'm trying to get her ready for that and I want to make her feel ready for it. It wouldn't be fair for someone who not only has a lot of experience on her, but also taught her everything that she knows. So I have to challenge her, but also I have to be realistic. Of course, I know what she's gonna do. She has a couple little tricky moves and I know the tricks, but I have to kind of let her land them or else she might not throw them when it's real. And this, her getting a chance to trade with me like this, she, she would never get to trade with me if, if we were going hard on each other one of us would uh, end up hurt and she's young strong fast so it could very well be me she got me i kind of had my arm in the way but it still didn't feel good uh now natalia has pretty good kicks and really good boxing and that's her little special move there the right kick to the right hand and then i always do it back to her because she actually came up with it and sort of i never did that but she has so much success with it in sparring that I started doing it back to her and she basically gets everyone with that move. But now she's tired and I'm just telling her to come on and we're both huffing and puffing there, you hear that. But I want her to go, I'm like, come on, let's go. And we start making mistakes when we get tired and we become inefficient when we get tired and we are unable to protect ourselves properly when we get tired, which would be a big problem if we were trying to hurt each other. There's a downside to light sparring. Anybody know what it is? You know what the downside to light sparring is? Pull back too much. Expectation is lower. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so like, oh, yeah, yeah. Cool. we build people up and then the first time they get hit for real, they're like, people get in the habit of like conceding leg kicks. Like if I'm, like when I kick, when I kick your legs, I don't kick them as hard as like Cliff was kicking them. You know what I mean? And it's like, well, it's not that bad. I just want to block my head. We, we, we preach hands up. Everyone does a good job of hands up, but then the body and legs are getting made up, but in flight friendly sparring, you don't have any context, so you're just like, not that big a deal. So that's the downside. 
of sparring like this. We do hard sparring rounds, we just don't post those because we have amateur and professional fighters here and we don't want to post their, like, their real shit. You know, we post this is just us having a good time, sort of. <laughs>